good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, your excellency mr governor and uh, thank you for the invitation you made to me and to my team and uh, also i'm seeing that a huge number of participation and i'm very much delighted to uh, listen to important papers since morning thank you very much for organizing and also i'm i'm i'm, I'm having uh, the opportunity and i'm really fortunate to talk to many specialists uh, who are not known in india but uh, globally they are very uh, renowned person thank you very much today i'm going to uh, give thanks to scp again because of your leadership and also the previous governor mr murganathan both you are doing very excellent job and you have gone to the seventh uh, international conference so that's a great achievement i congratulate uh, you for this achievement thank you very much uh, your excellency and uh, today uh, i chose uh, one lecture because uh, this covid has uh, created so many opportunities to learn to disseminate and also to pave the way for future research but uh, we have seen that uh, this uh, produced an unprecedented challenge that how to deal with covid and what to be done how to prevent covid uh, not only that uh, it had a very extensive uh, uh, impact in the community not only the health problem but uh, we had so many dilemmas still is working with us and uh, one of them which was being discussed that the new onset diabetes mellitus in the people and also we found that uh, gbs patients and so many other cardiac complications the cerebral complications so those are the things which are being uh, coming day by day those are the health problem but whether only the health problem is there or we have to deal with so many other dilemmas so today i will try to focus on some of the dilemmas and i will go quickly on those issues which are not related to the health but i will just focus on the health problems so before i go to uh, say something uh, to my tribute to the great heroes the doctors who sacrificed their life while dealing with the covid patient in bangladesh and also i do recognize the uh, heroic activity of the doctors of india and also in this part because we have got many similarities in the health structure so these are some of the uh, photographs of some of doctors uh, who worked and also i i pay my regards to the nurses other healthcare workers who really fought against uh, covid and so we all know that uh, it started from wuhan the capital of hubei and uh, it, it is a beautiful city but the thing is that the virus uh, initiated its journey from this uh, city of wuhan and then uh, in bangladesh uh, we came to know about covid on march 8 the first case declared on march 8 and within 10 days we 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 had a sudden demise of a person that was the first declaration of a death so it, we were not prepared that death will be there so early so we understood that we had less preparation that we could not fight against covid at the time and that created a sort of your government activity and on 26 march the first lockdown was imposed in bangladesh and then uh, so uh, we we will discuss a few of the dilemmas we know that uh, you are all aware of the dilemmas but i will be discussing some of the dilemmas the health dilemma so very unique moment it has been created by this covid 19 and we are going through this uh, uh, situation and then uh, we we know that uh, this health dilemma among the health dilemma there is long covid 19 that is your we have seen that after acute covid the long covid can be there where maybe the symptoms can persist for about 12 weeks but on occasion after 12 weeks we have found that the patient can have some of the manifestations of covid so the post covid syndrome is there and uh, and we have to remember that uh, it can mimic many of the viral disorders but we have to exclude those disorders uh, to, uh, to, to make a diagnosis of post-COVID syndrome. So 
This is a dilemma that COVID, the viral infection, whatever the viral infection is, where it can affect, but it goes away. The effects go away. But the thing is that COVID has produced some of the long effects in the human body. So we are finding that some of the devastating activities are still there, and we can find that uh, uh, those symptoms are persisting in many patients. So prevalence, it has been seen that one in 10 people uh, who were tested positive, they are having COVID uh, symptoms after 12 weeks. And 30% of the people can return to the usual activities. But the thing is that we have to remember 30% of the COVID-19 patients still have got persistent symptoms after nine months. So I have taken the study report when it was taken, but still uh, we can find that the newer reports can focus on the duration uh, in the coming months. And uh, long COVID symptoms, these are the symptoms we all know that the patient can have unusual fatigue and other respiratory symptoms, but every system of the body can be affected by long COVID. But the three most common symptoms, the brain fog, fatigue, and extreme tiredness after mental or physical work, those three were found to be the commonest. And it is a Bangladeshi report, Professor Mujibur Rahman and others, that is post-COVID syndrome uh, and symptomatic COVID-19 patients. It was a prospective study. And here we have found that 46% patients developed post-COVID symptoms. And the most important 70% patients they had post-viral fatigue. So they, were, they proposed some of the important factors which produce this post-COVID uh, fatigue ability in many of the patients. So here we can find that pathogenesis can have so many uh, probabilities, but the thing is that, that uh, organ damage and microclots, those are the two important issues what we have to consider in the future also. And at this time, no laboratory test we can definitely distinguish. And as I mentioned, that you have to exclude the other possibilities to make established diagnosis of a post-COVID syndrome. So we, can, we do not require any test, but we can go for the organ-related testing in some patients. And uh, very importantly, everybody says that what type of treatment can be given to the patients having long COVID syndrome. But uh, till today, we know that So we don't exactly have any particular type of treatment, but we need some form of your multidisciplinary management, which are now being handled by the pulmonary, cardiovascular, neuropsychiatry, primary care, physicians, renal, and hematological. All these types of multidisciplinary management can produce some benefit to the patients. So here, we have got a vaccine. We are very much fortunate. And so everybody says whether vaccination can prevent the disease. But we know that 85% of the people can uh, prevent the infection uh, uh, by after uh, uh, primary dose series. And about 50% of the people uh, can have less manifestation in long COVID syndrome. So here we can find if we take two doses, we can have less risk of long COVID syndrome. And also, we have uh, come to know that uh, very important uh, finding. I have, go I have gone through this one. During the second wave, India had so many cases of mucormycosis. So this mucormycosis has several etiological aspects to remember. The most important was the hygienic factor that is important. And in India, mucormycosis was prevalent earlier along with your candida infection and aspergillosis. But because of this COVID and hygienic issues, and we have found the rhinocerebral type of your uh, mucormycosis became prevalent, and still it is persisting. So that is one important issue. And another issue, Mr. Chairman, sir, I will say that uh, our experience says that uh, we know that whenever uh, a, a, a service holder or a student uh, he's become sick, he gets a sick leave. But after uh, post-COVID uh, post dilemma, we have seen many of them, 
they do not want to be sick, they don't get the sick leave. And so it is a dilemma, how sick is too sick, uh, that, that can be answered by deep personal reflection and self-understanding. And another issue is that ethical dilemma. We have so many difficulties during that one that the patient uh, came. So a huge number of patients, they uh, appeared in the emergency department. But exactly whether we did rightly to the patients, that is also ethical. And in the future, for other patients, what ethical aspects will be covered by the hospital authorities and by the doctors, nurses, that is another dilemma. So another, we had a huge challenge with vaccination. And uh, we, uh, after vaccination started uh, in June 2021, we had less than 4%. But um, uh, one, after one year after, uh, in Ju uh, June 2022, we had more than 70% coverage of the primary series. And about 35% uh, got the booster dose. So uh, we like to give thanks to Indian government for both the issues because the first gift was to the army and also 1.2 million doses of AstraZeneca at the time, other than the usual commercial vaccination program. So um, I want to show this picture because, you know, Mr. Chairman, sir, uh, in our country, a very strong uh, ex extended immunization program is going on and the vaccination in the rural areas also, they carry this uh, vaccination box for the regular immunization. But here, we applied these people to, to carry on the immunization. So shortly, we could involve these people to make vaccination a successful program in Bangladesh. So we have so many challenges. You know about that. I'm not going to repeat, repeat this one. But whether after uh, vaccination, any, any long-term side effects will be there, that will be a dilemma, Mr. Chairman, sir. Whether any other effective vaccination is possible, that will be our question. And so, uh, academic dilemma, we all face like this one. We saw that the students, they could not go to the colleges, the schools, the young children, the toddlers, they were affected because they had to stay in the, uh, in the house and, and, and online education system was given in medical college. And you all are experienced about the medical colleges and we could not teach the students about the clinical classes. So with the patients, they were uh, in the house, they were sitting online, and only the therapy, uh, theoretical part of all the subjects were uh, 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 taught to the students. But it was a real problem, and that reflection we saw in our professional examination, when they were in front of the patients, they could not answer properly on many occasions. And we have seen that uh, we, we took the initiative to, during lockdown also, we started our post-graduation and graduation classes, and so the students could appear online, and we had to continue, and later also the primary education was involved. And so state-run, uh, this television was teaching the students that the students were learning at home. And also the medical education, the online classes, we had uh, uh, classes, uh, and uh, we taught the students and all these uh, teachers were teaching their students. And also we found that change in the research. And very importantly, Mr. Chairman, sir, uh, 87,000 scientific papers uh, at the very beginning. We did a very few months. And 47% of them were contributed by the Chinese, Chinese researchers. But after April 2020, the number of publications were decreasing by the Chinese authority. And also we have found that the United States contributed 23% of the worldwide coronavirus-related publication. And journals were overwhelmed, and they used to publish up to eight times faster. And, 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 and we can see that PubMed and the Scopus all were involved to produce more and more research articles on COVID infection. Then economic issues, I'm not going into details about that. We all suffered from economic issues, and many uh, persons were, became jobless. And also we found that every, everywhere there were the problems. And we have found the Malaysian dilemma that sustainable economy, and they think of that uh, 
uh, that is empowering the frontliners should be highlighted and prioritized. That is, health system funding is very important, what uh, Malaysia is talking about. Global immune security, definitely after COVID, it has been changed. We are now going through one country to another. And also in the, in the different parts of the world, we can see the change scenario in the human security. And also another important issue, Mr. Chairman, is the labor dilemma that many of the countries, even in uh, India, many of the you know, labor, labor, their laborers and their workers who had been reduced and so they became jobless. United Kingdom, similarly, United States, they had suffered from this side of your changes. And so the, 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 the different countries, the statistics shows that many of the countries are struggling with the economy uh, after post-COVID. And uh, you know that uh, we have learned so many things to manage the patients in the hospital. And uh, during COVID time, we had many successes in India, in Bangladesh, in South Asia in general. But the thing is that many, many things are needed uh, that whether we are uh, uh, completely equipped to treat any patient in future pandemic. So it has learned. Uh, we have some achievements. We increase the number of beds, we increase the number of ICU beds, and also we can see that high flow nasal cannula, ventilator, uh, oxygen concentrator, oxygen cylinder, and also the central oxygen supply. Those are all involved in the process. But we had so many limitations, and especially in the people in India and Bangladesh, aberrant behavior. So they were taking any type of OTC drugs. So whenever they did, they did not require any type of antibiotic, they, they, they took antibiotics rampantly, and also steroid. So there were so many sufferings from the patient's eyes. The very importantly, we have seen when they carried the patient to the emergency, exactly what to be done. And also, it was very difficult for the doctors to go near to the patient every day, every moment, and touching the patient like other patients. So the doctors also suffered a lot. Initially, we didn't have the mask, PPE, and eye shield. So later, gradually, they were educated and they could handle. And there were so many general people's attitude that they have experienced that uh, you know, that initially they become, you know, uh, 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 what they could do. They were, you know, at a loss. They couldn't understand. But we found in our country, the festivals, the people did not, uh, you, you know, comply with the rules. They were going through the ferries and others. And so we had so many challenges. So especially in Bengali, we call Jivon versus Jivika. That is life versus livelihoods. And we asked the people, why you are outside? Why you are not remaining in the house during lockdown? Says that, okay, I may die, but I can feel the cry of my children. So I have to go to earn some money. So I'm going outside. So that was their answer at the time. And also we found mental health and personal health. This stress is very important. And we have found the brain fog and depression and all type of psychiatric abnormalities and, and the suicidal activity also increased during COVID time. That is a problem. And, and, and the divorce rate in Bangladesh is keeping, is keeping rise. And, and here you can see that 35 couples sought divorce every day in the capital city, one every 41 minutes. It's a, it's a matter at the, in post COVID era. What are the reasons the psychosocial aspects should be addressed as a dilemma? And also, uh, we have. Uh, say the social dilemma was there. We, we had uh, abandoned many of the social activities. And uh, also we understand that after two years, a little bit of tourism is going on. And after stopping tourism, many of the countries, many of the areas, they suffered really financial loss. That is very important. So we, we are going to near normal. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, sir, uh, I know that is a very huge discussion. It needs long hours to be discussed. And we have faced someone, some, some features, and I have discussed those. But in the future also, I, we need some more discussion. So, ladies and gentlemen, my deep regards to Professor Anuj Maheshwari, Honorable Governor of uh, India, Professor Kaji Tarikul Islam, the Founder Governor of Bangladesh Chapter, Professor H.M. Nazmullah San, immediate past governor, 
my race said Dr. Narsa Banur and SCP Bangladesh chapter and all COVID frontline fighter. With these few words, I like to conclude, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Sir.